Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Travels with Tulsa, sponsored by the Friends of the Tulsa City County Library. My name is Marion Sexton, and I'd like to welcome all of you here. We're so glad to have you join us for the second of our eight Travels with Tulsa. If you would like more information about becoming a friend of the Tulsa City County Libraries, we would love to talk to you about it. There's also forms over here that you can fill out. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Be sure to be with us next week when our friend Yusuf Farad will share about his homeland of Turkey, the Turkish culture and the Gulan movement. Our traveler today, sharing jewels of the Czech Republic, is one of our favorite travelers and a new Friends board member, George Modric. <laughs> George grew up, go ahead. <laughs> George grew up in Czechoslovakia, where he studied four years of engineering at South Bohemian University. After the Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968, he immigrated to Canada and graduated from Queen's University in Kingston, Ontario. George earned his master's degree at the University of South Alabama and a doctorate in exercise physiology at the University of Tennessee. For several years, he taught anatomy and physiology at two universities. After he got his MBA, he became an administrator at St. John Health System in Tulsa. He capped his career as the Director of Academic Services at OSU School of Osteopathic Medicine here in Tulsa. George and his wife, Gwen, are retired after a long career in healthcare. George and Gwen are avid travelers. Please join me in welcoming George Moses. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll uh, move on the jewels of the Czech Republic. Well, I am sure that most of you know exactly where, where the country is. But just in case one or two of you don't know, I uh, take the liberty to show you. Czech Republic is uh, part of the European Union. And uh, it's right in the middle, that little speck in the middle. And the European Union has 27 countries with eight countries in the waiting in the wings to be admitted to EU, particularly uh, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, uh, all those countries down here, and Turkey, and of course, Ukraine. Uh, Czech population is uh, 10 and a half million people, and the Czech Republic would fit into Oklahoma two and a half times, okay? So uh, uh, it's in uh, the very center of Europe. It's uh, bordered with Poland and Germany and Austria and, and Hungary and um, Slovakia. Very important uh, geographic location. This is the Czech flag with uh, the Czech uh, Coat of arms, double uh, tailed lion and a eagle. The lion is uh, Bohemia, and the eagle, at, the eagle is um, Moravia. We have Slovakia, but you know they uh, selected to uh, have their own independent country. Okay, what is uh, uh, what is Czech Republic famous for? Well, you know, in the first uh, half of uh, the first millennium, Europe, Central Europe, there was a bunch of uh, clans, families, and all kinds of people fighting each other, fighting Rome and whatnot. You had the Franks, and you had the Anglos, and you had the Saxons, and you had the Visigoths, and of course, Slavs, and, and uh, Germans, and all kinds of stuff. The Cyril and Met uh, Methodius brought Christianity to uh, Europe in. 850, and the legend is that a huge group of Slavic people, Slavs, uh, were hunting one day, and they were led uh, by three brothers, Czech, Black, and Rus. And at that time, they decided, well, we'll split up with just too many people. So the Czech took his people out west on Bohemia and Moravia. Black went up north. Forming Poland and Rus went east from Russia. Uh, so 
The first Czech king was uh, crowned in 1850, so the Przemysl dynasty, uh, Przemysl the Plower, and um, they ruled Bohemia and Moravia for 500 years. The Czechs were independent until 16, uh, 1620, and they got the kind of uh, fighting with the Habsburg king Ferdinand II. And they had a big battle of uh, White Mountain in 1620, and the Czechs lost. And the Hungarians, uh, the Habsburg Empire, took the heads of 27 leading Czech families and beheaded them in an old town square in 1620. Uh, and when you go to the square, there are still stones with the crosses on them where they were, uh, uh, you know, died. All right, uh, so uh, people often ask me, what is this uh, Austrian Hungarian uh, empire? Well, it was ruled by Habsburg family for years, and essentially they uh, owned all of Central Europe. It expanded and, 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 and contracted over the years with war, various wars, but that's, uh, that's all the countries that were ruled by the Habsburg. Okay, the first Czech Republic was uh, established in 1918, right after the first, uh, first war. The Hitler came in uh, 1939, was there six years. Uh, in uh, 1948, of course, after the Second War, Stalin, Churchill, and Roosevelt met in, met in Yalta, and uh, they divided uh, the world between them. And unfortunately, the Czech Republic uh, fell under the Russian influence and communist rule was established in 1948. But the Czechs didn't like it. They liked to they uh, uh, like the West. So they traded with Germany and, and um, Italy and uh, Great Britain. And that's why the Russian uh, uh, armies came in in 1968 to quell that possible revolution. So we were under Russian occupation for 20 years. And of course, in 1989, uh, the Berlin Wall fell and everybody rejoiced. Okay, moving on. So Prague is the crown jewel of the uh, Czech Republic. This is an iconic picture of uh, the Vltava Moldau River and Charles Bridge. And of course, the Prague Castle. Prague Castle is the the uh, largest ancient castle in the world. It expands from here all the way to here, all the way. On the second uh, courtyard of, of uh, the castle is St. Vitus Cathedral, beautiful cathedral. But of course, there's another basilica, uh, St. George's Basilica, in there, and, and uh, Dalibor monument. So people go across the bridge to uh, the gate up around this obscenely um, elaborate Baroque church, <laughs> St. Nicholas Church. And uh, St. Vitus Cathedral, wonderful place. If you're ever there, you have to visit. It's, it's, it's magnificent. It's, so the, the second courtyard of uh, Prague Castle is huge. It's actually square. Uh, this is uh, the St. Vitus app with uh, trans a, a, a transept. Uh, you know, back to okay, now we travel, our family travels everywhere, and uh, th this is actually taken at uh, one, of the, one of the doors at St. Vitus Cathedral. That's uh, my daughters and my grandchildren and my um, son in laws, and Gwen is hiding back here. <laughs> and uh, so in fact, my wife has been there so many times in Czech Republic, she doesn't want to go back. She said, like, I've seen it all already. <laughs> uh, this uh, guy, uh, Connor, uh, my grandson, has been there so a lot. And one time, he, they, they, he was a hockey player. They played hockey in Kutna Hora in, in the mining mountain. And the coach decided to take him to Prague and show them Prague. Of course, they went through the streets, they got lost. And uh, Connor said, I know exactly where I am. Let me show you the way. <laughs> so uh, uh, 
This is another picture showing Charles Bridge with this time with the Western the West Tower, Dark Tower, and you know the, the riverside along the, uh, the river with uh, the National Theater and uh, the White Tower. The largest square in um, Prague is the Wenceslas Square. Wenceslas Square is uh, over half a mile long. A huge square, and that's essentially uh, the, the Prague Rambler. Uh, you know, if you've ever been to Barcelona, the Rambler Walk is very famous. So, this is uh, the Prague Rambler. But we're going to concentrate for a while to, to the old town. The old town is a square right down here with. The church uh, called the Teen Church. Uh, the actual name is Our Lady of Teen. And if you notice that the towers of the church, one of them is a little wider than the other one. And when you go through Europe, sometimes you see that if the church has uh, two towers, one of them is a little more robust. And that is a uh, uh, dichotomy, uh, male and female, man and wife type of deal. This tower in the middle is uh, City Hall with the clock, the or Orloy clock, a very famous uh, astronomical clock. It's always mobbed by people. It's all kinds of bunch of people because the clock does all kinds of things and they watch it. And of course, on the other side of the square is uh, the St. Um, Nicholas Church. That is uh, the sister church of the one on the other side of the river. And this road, in this square, of course, the royalty went there and there were all celebrations and the kings and queens went down there. And when they went back to the castle, they went through here and up across the bridge to the castle. It's called the Royal Road or King's Road. And, uh, and so the tourists actually walked that road all the way to the castle and it's, um, and everybody does that. Orloy, Orloy is the astronomical clock. And was put in in 1410. It shows positions of the sun, moon, planet, zodiac, constellations, and everything. Essentially, this is wheels within wheels. All these wheels that keep turning. And uh, there are several you know, hands to show you which ever. And you almost have to have a college degree to understand it. <laughs> this clock was put in by Master Hanush. Master Hanush uh, made the clock for Prague. And it was a, such tremendous success all over because all those uh, towns, all they had clocks. They were all famous and you know, proud of their clocks, like Big Ben, hello. And uh, so the city councilors saw that how famous Prague becomes because of this clock. They didn't, they wanted to prevent Mr. Hanush to make another clock like that. So in their wisdom, they blinded him. And uh, so he was an old blind man. And one time, just before he died, he went to the tower master and asked him if he could listen to his to the working of his clock for the last time before he died. So the tower master let him come in and he stood by the clock. And then he reached in the innards of the clock and the clock stopped. And they couldn't make it work for the next 40 years. It was uh, mute for uh, 40 years. Just to show you the intricacies of the clock, this is what you can read on it. Uh, so each you know, line means something and whatever, and that's it turns, and then you can... So anyway, it's uh, quite a deal. Going back to uh, the clock, it has all kinds of figures on it around the clock that means something. Let me talk about the skeleton right here. That is uh, when the hour chimes, you know, he pulls a, a line with a bell and it says, Memento Mori. Memento Mori, you know what it is? I mean, remember that you will die. So, you know, we have, you know, and these, <laughs> in these windows, every hour on the hour, there are 12 fossils. 
walk, walk through, they bow to the crowd, and that's what the crowd is waiting for. And that's why it's uh, so many people around the clock. Another uh, monument is uh, Jan Hus monument. Jan Hus was a uh, theologian, philosopher, and he became a religious reformer. He preached against uh, the current clergy, uh, the church, and particularly against indulgencies and other things that uh, the Catholic, uh, he didn't agree with the Catholic church. Of course, he was uh, excommunicated, excommunicated, arrested, and eventually burned at the stake in uh, uh, 1415. And because he had so many followers that, that sparkled the so-called the Hussite Wars. Essentially, there were the early Protestants, you know, fighting Catholics. Um, and these Hussite Wars uh, lasted 28 years. So uh, uh, Martin Luther, 100 years later, took over the teaching of Jan Hus and uh, was much more successful reformer because at that time, the printing world was much more common than years before. So he could uh, mail his proclamations and manifesta on doors of the various churches for everybody to read. So his message was uh, spread uh, the faster. Okay, we talked about a royal road. So people go you know, through these narrows and twisted streets all the way up to the bridge. And this is uh, the bridge tower, guard tower. tower. Uh, that's the West Tower. And then the crowd, of course, walks across the bridge to the East Tower and up, up the castle. The road is twisted, narrow street for security reasons, because it was very difficult to organize ambush in these narrow streets. So, and then, of course, people go across the, up, across the, the Charles Bridge and up, up to the castle. Prague is called the city of hundred fires. And if we are actually looking from the lesser town down to old town, uh, through the, the, the Keen, Cathedral, and on the other side of the square is uh, St. Nicholas, sister church of this St. Nicholas, that's sitting on uh, in the lesser, in the lesser town. So in uh, Prague, that's the name of it. Uh, lesser town means uh, that's the name of the town. town that's the name of the, of, 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 of the town. It's one still Prague, but it's like Bronx and, and Queens, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, in the, in the sea of uh, this medieval architecture, you, uh, uh, you can see Gothic, uh, uh, Roman, Renaissance, all, kind of, all kinds of architecture in time. But you also can come across some oddities, you know, some capricious oddities like this dancing house. Uh, so what is uh, Czech Republic famous for? Oh, oh, by the way, uh, subway. Subway was made in, it, it was built in 1950s. It was during, of course, the height of the Cold War. And they made it very modern now. Everybody is using it. It's really easy to navigate. And um, they made it really deep as, as a bomb shelter for the, uh, for the people. So they, in some places, it's uh, over three stories deep uh, underneath. and. Um, Escalators are really fast, so you have to be you have to be careful. Okay, what what are what is Czech Republic famous for? Well, uh, very low crime. Nobody has guns. Nobody. Even the hunters have to be vetted very carefully to give them a shotgun. Uh, it, uh, it it has huge expat community. 
lot of people who and go to Czech Republic, they like it so much, they just stay, especially in Prague, like the au pairs and people teach English and, and, and so on. Um, it has, Czech Republic has the most castles, all the countries in Europe, you know, per uh, square miles. Um, it has the most famous astronomical clock, it has 12 UNESCO monuments. It's the heart of Europe, the very center of Europe. Many monarchs, kings, and generals proclaim whoever owns Prague owns Europe. And um, so, uh, in fact, about six miles from my house is a large white stone obelisk. So it's known as the very center of Europe. Uh, another distinction is that. The largest battle on, in the European continent was fought in Moravia, right here, and it was the Battle of the Three Emperors. Industry, famous, we have both heavy and, and uh, light industry, cars, trucks, armaments, very famous for armaments, uh, explosives, uh, sugar, refineries, breweries. The Czech Crystal, of course, is famous as well. Sport, hockey, tennis, now we go to words. There's some Czech words that snuck into the English language. And one of them is dollar. It goes from the Czech taller that we'll talk about a little later, silver taller. It was universal currency in, in Europe for centuries. Um, pistol, of course, you had armaments. Pistol was after Czech made pistols was a currency, you could buy four or five cows for a good pistol. So they were traded um, in, in that manner. And of course, the word Bohemia. Look at the dictionary, it's avant-garde, artist, non-conformist, beatnik. Of course, you remember Steve Martin and Dan Aykroyd? They're crazy, wild and crazy guys. <laughs> well, that's... Okay, we talked about uh, the, the battle, the very, very famous battle. This is the monument of uh, the Slavkov, actually it's called uh, Austerlitz in German, a lot of German, under German occupation for centuries. So there's a lot, lot of people recognize the German name before the Czech name. Was, uh, in 1805, there was a huge battle between uh, Napoleon, the Emperor of France, then, and Alexander I, the Russian Tsar, and uh, Ferdinand II, uh, 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 Francis II, uh, uh, the Habsburg Emperor. 68,000 troops, like Napoleon, and the other side had over 90,000. Napoleon won the war, and, uh, and his uh, tactics and strategy of the battle is taught in every military academy in the world. It's on the par with Cane and Gaugamela uh, about, uh, battle. Uh, underneath is a museum that talks about all about the battle and, and the uniforms and the, the, how many soldiers they had and whatnot. So uh, if you'd like to visit this, uh, these figures on the corners, the monument are these uh, 22 feet tall uh, soldiers. This particular one is uh, Austrian. We're moving on to uh, the town of uh, Mining Mountain, Kutmahora. This is uh, Santa Barbara Church, established in you know, 11, something, 25. Or, and uh, it's very famous for its ornate, Flying buttresses. Santa Barbara is the saint of the miners, and the whole mine uh, town is uh, the silver mines were producing uh, silver for three or three and a half centuries. And of course, the silver dollars are being minted here and, and uh, as a universal currency. If you look at uh, the mines, uh, some uh, medieval paintings show uh, 
whatever happened in these mines, the mines employed thousands of people, miners, tradesmen, artisans, clergy, security, bankers, undertakers. It was one huge, dirty, and deadly city. Okay, one more picture of uh, uh, Santa Barbara with the adjacent monastery that has been, you know, made into an art gallery. That's where that picture came from. Uh, and, you know, uh, it's another mon monastery very close to uh, Santa Barbara. And it's very famous ossuary, a boneyard. Uh, the abbot of that monastery in 1125 during the crusade went to the Holy Land pilgrimage and came back with a bag of soil from Jerusalem. He took the soil and sprinkled it all around the, the, the abbot's ground, making it holy. holy. Well, the holy and from then on, everybody wanted to be buried in that holy ground. And there were no shortage of bodies in, that, in, in Europe. Of course, you had the Hussite Wars, you had the 30 Year War, uh, you had the Black Death, 1330. So there are bodies everywhere. So uh, what happened was that the bodies from the older graves had to be dug out, making room for more bodies. And those bones are stored in the monastery spacious cellars. Well, eventually the cellars filled up and the abbot hired several artists to make some, to organize the bones somewhere, somehow. And they, they went to work and that's what that's the result right here. They made everything out of bones. Uh, the, the walls of the cellar and some of the other cloisters were, you know, decorated by bones. Uh, the pyramids of skulls, like this particular thing is in the chandelier. And uh, if you walk through, there's all kinds of uh, other artistic uh, renditions, like uh, this uh, coat of arms of uh, the Schwarzberg family. Schwarzberg. Uh, Schwarzenberg were very famous uh, European family, and so this is one of the coats of arms. I would like to to look at uh, this little down in the corner. There is a bird pecking on uh, the skull, you know, and we'll I'll explain that later. Anyway, so if you go there, you have to arm and tour. <laughs> now we go to my old. Old town, this is my hometown, Czeske Budějovice or Budweis in, in German. And uh, this is the old, uh, this is the center of the town. Lotava River, they, they, took, they channeled the water of the river around the whole town, making it a moat uh, for uh, <laughs> security purposes. The square is uh, called Otakar Square. It is a black black mountain in one corner, a white a, a, a black tower, white tower, and uh, so okay, the black tower at one point it was um, the, the site of the garrison of the town garrison, and uh, of course the powder was kept there. The adjacent church is Saint Nicholas Church. On the other side is Saint uh, Teresa Church with the white tower, with uh, attached uh, monastery. And back here is the salt tower. Um, very picturesque, uh, beautiful, beautiful. There are arcades all the way around, all the way around. Arcades with shops and restaurants and uh, boutiques. The Otakar Square is, uh, is uh, City Hall and uh, Water fountain. City Hall, the clock of the City Hall, every hour it plays a music of a local folk song. It plays it for about 20, 30 seconds. People stop and listen and try to uh, figure out which song they're playing today. So uh, it's one of those. Uh, uh, 
Okay, well, the Black Tower is for a couple of euros. You can go up there. They'll let you go up there and you can go and check the, the ambiance of the city from a bird's uh, perspective. And this church is the uh, St. Nicholas Church, famous because uh, I was baptized there. <laughs> I was born there and lived there for and studied there. The, the streets of uh, Czeska Bojovic or Budweiser are narrow, uh, twisted, medieval. There's a lot of boutiques, bars, restaurants in there. And the, the salt tower in the back, salt in the Middle Ages was really precious com uh, commodity. Every town had, had a store of salt. In 1626, uh, the Swedes attacked Europe and they were all over Europe. And they wanted that salt. So they attacked the city, but they never did penetrate the city because of the moat and, and the strong garrison. But they were shooting at the tower from the other side of the moat, stone balls, cannonballs. And some of them are still embedded in that, in, in that tower. So um, some history there. But I'm talking about Budweiser beer, and this is Good one. This is the original Budweiser brewery. And uh, you go out there, you'll check it all out. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Budweiser, German, Budwar, and Czech. After the war, the Americans uh, bought, well, actually, a Heidi Bush, bought the name. Can you use the name for, for a few bucks? Okay, so they made a deal. So, uh, Heiser Bush you know, started uh, producing Budweiser beer. And, uh, and of course, Budweiser is still brewing their beer. But the agreement was that the Czech beer could not be exported to the United States. And the United States, not bad beer, <laughs> cannot be exported uh, to uh, Europe. So that's still, that agreement still stands. But the beers are different. Another picture of a uh, town at night. All those Beneva cities are lit at night. They really they look beautiful to see if you walk through there. Again, the city hall. Another very famous town is Chesky Krumo. Chesky Krumov is a UNESCO site, truly, truly medieval when you walk through there. Uh, it's dominated by Krumov Castle, huge castle. The Vltava River makes a horseshoe all the way around the castle, making it very safe. And uh, this, this, this tower, we call it the uh, Cascade Tower. Uh, the white, the white tower of uh, the church. You guessed it, St. Nicholas. And uh, so fantastic, fantastic city. Everybody who goes to Czech probably goes, goes through this town. The, the Plone Bridge goes over the river to uh, the garden, um, the park and the garden. The gardens are famous for um, For uh, the revolving auditorium. This auditorium revolves 360 degrees. And uh, of course, they have a lot of them set up. A lot of scenes. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. I've never been there. People who've been there say it's the best anything they have ever seen. They have operas in favorite place and, and whatever. The only problem with it is you can get a ticket. Because they are sold ahead for a year and a half. So, uh, you know, maybe one day I'll be lucky enough to, uh, to have one. So, there's another picture of uh, a Chesky Krumov at night. You just see it all the street. Fantastic place to, to walk through. Okay, again, my family, this is in the second courtyard of the castle. Every by the well. Because every castle had to have a well, so they had independent source of water. 
And each well in every castle is covered somehow, usually by ornate ironwork, uh, because they don't want the tourists to <laughs> throw the, everything into the into the well. So uh, that's at the Room of Castle. All right, another town is uh, Carlsbad. It's in a very deep valley. River goes through. There it's called a warm river, and the river is warm because there's so many hot springs in that uh, in that town that actually the water in the river is warm. This is a magnet of, of the jet set of the world. Everybody who is anybody asked goes to. Uh, to Carl's Bath. How did it happen? The king, Charles IV, of course, he established just about anything in the beginning, first part of the 15th century, was hunting in these woods and he got injured. So the locals said, well, we'll take you to the hot spring and it'll make you feel better. So he went to the hot spring and they made him drink some of the mineral water from other springs and he loved it. So he established Carl's Bath. The Charles is Wow. Uh, everybody. And um, so uh, <clears throat> anyway, need to forward it somehow. The clicker doesn't work anymore. Anyway, so next, uh, I would like to show some. Forward slide on this. Okay. You showed me which button to push here. Okay. That one. Okay. All right. All right. Back in the saddle. <laughs> uh, this is River Tepla. This it's a, a, this is called Hotel Poop, P U P P, very famous hotel. Uh, many U.S. movies have been filmed here. It has a huge casino. Uh, that's where they, all the jets that go there and gamble. And um, also, it, it sponsors international film festival every every year. The Colonnade. Around the main main drag, full of geysers, hot water. As you go a little faster, there's so many geysers that even on some intersections you have this uh, hot uh, geyser. And of course, the backyards of the hotels are rather pleasant. Okay, uh, Pilsner is the capital of Western Bohemia. It's famous for its beer. This is the entrance of the, to the very famous brewery. That brewed beer for uh, 250 years now, and uh, it's absolutely huge. It, this is the bottling plant, just the bottling plant. They have several of these uh, out there. And of course, the tourists like to slog or slog through this half a mile of the cellars uh, underneath, uh, underneath uh, the brewery. Pilsner Urgwell is the most famous Pilsner beer. They make others, but Pilsner Urgwell is uh, the most famous. Pilsner Urgwell in German means Pilsner Spring. And they say that the beer is so good because of the water, the local water. Um, physicians in, in the Czech Republic and in Germany and Austria sometimes prescribe this beer. People to drink, people who have intestinal problems. It's true, if you have a little stomach discomfort, buy this beer, drink a couple of them, guarantee it works. <laughs> so therefore, to your health. Okay, we'll... Uh, we have a few more minutes. So we'll talk about the castles. Of course, uh, Americans are, or uh, people from this part of uh, the hemisphere like to see the castle. And we have a bunch of them. This is Kaustein. It was built in 1348 by, of course, Charles IV. And uh, he built it. It's, it's, a, it's a fortress. 
and he built it to safeguard uh, the royal treasure and the crown jewels, and also for his getaway with his hunting parties and his other kings, you know, from other countries. Interesting part about this castle is that there were no women allowed there for hundreds of years. So that was just edict. But that is why this castle hosts most weddings. Every every day there's three or four weddings in this castle. If you are wedded to wedding in Palestine, you are uh, a big man or a woman on campus. This is the birth view of the castle. And uh, of course, down here is the, the little town of uh, Arlstein. And, you know, people usually take a whole drone carriage, you know, all these processions down here. And, and, and uh, <clears throat> this is the castle. Another castle is Konopiště. Konopiště is very, very close to Prague, maybe 15 miles south of Prague. And uh, it has been, in possession of the Habsburg family for forever. And the latest occupant was uh, Ferdinand, Duke Ferdinand Dress. Uh, Duke Ferdinand was the next in line for the Habsburg throne. He was the nephew of the Emperor uh, Josef, uh, Franz Josef II. So, and he was an avid hunter. If he goes to his castle, all the walls of all the hallways and all the rooms are just covered with his trophies. They say they kill them all, but I mean, they are there you know, several thousand in there, so I don't know if he and all of them. But anyway, it's ironic, but that he himself died by a bullet. He was killed in Sarajevo in uh, 1914 by a Serbian student, and that gave uh, rise to the first war. Another castle is Hluboka Castle. Hluboka is very close to Česká Budějovice, um, in Budweiser, and just a few miles, and we as kids played here all the time. Uh, you know, there's a lot of hiding places, and it was just great for, for, uh, for us. Nobody bothered us, it was like, so we went inside and through the window, and nobody cares. You know, it was just wonderful. Uh, of course, we didn't, we didn't damage anything. But uh, anyway, so this is it's a uh, wonderful. It, it belonged to Schwanzenberg. Uh, Schwanzenberg is another very powerful European family. The castles all over the England and Germany and Austria, everywhere. But they lived here. This is their favorite castle. They lived there all the way to 1939. And when Hitler came, they took off. They didn't like Hitler. They didn't like his politics. They didn't want to have anything to do with him. So they went to the whole family moved to England during the war. And after, in restitution, when uh, these, uh, the houses and, and um, land, the castles that were taken over by the government, by the communist government, government were given back to the original owner. So this went back to uh, Schwarzenberg and he, got, he wanted to be the president of uh, Czech Republic at that time. And he, of course, he didn't speak Czech, so he didn't have a chance uh, uh, to be the president, but, but then he gave this castle to, to, to the state. So I, my donation to uh, the Czech Republic. Um, wow, look at this guy. Uh, those are the uh, handles of all the gates to the, to, uh, the castle. And uh, how did it come? Well, anyway, uh, Schwarzenberg uh, fought against uh, the Ottoman Empire for centuries. The Ottoman Empire, as you saw, it was encroaching on Europe from the south. Finally, they were beaten by the Battle of Vienna in really 1860, that late. And, uh, in one of the battles, he was riding his horse over a, a battleground, and he saw this severed Turkish head on the ground, and a crow pecking the eyes of, of uh, the skull of the head. So he thought, well, 
pretty iconic and I'll still interpret it and put it in my coat of arms, which he did, remember the boning thing? Yeah. That's, so anyway, <laughs> uh, the panorama, Luboka Park, lovely place. And on uh, this side, this used to be the stable. Now it has been converted to uh, arboretum. And uh, this is a glass, glass ceiling to let a lot of uh, the sun in. And so if you ever visit, you to go to the arboretum and see all the exotic uh, flowers and plants and trees. Another castle, and probably the last one, I have more, but not this enough, is Krivoka. Krivoka Castle was a, is a very strong place, a fortress. And for centuries, it served as a prison, medieval prison. Uh, many prominent nobility, warlords, even, even the royalty, clergy, who strayed from the current laws or doctrines, were uh, imprisoned here, and many of them died there. Let me just tell you about one guy who was an Englishman. His name was Edward Kelly. He called himself a Magus Alchemist uh, during the Rudolf II uh, rule in the uh, late 1500, 1588. Uh, and he promised uh, the emperor that he could make gold from other metals. Well, he tried and tried and he didn't succeed. So the emperor was very disappointed. <laughs> put him in jail in this castle. Actually, Edward Kelly died there. But it's a museum right now. There's a lot of uh, relics, medieval relics, uh, weapons, and, and whatnot. And you can see the different jail cells with pictures of the prominent uh, denizens of those uh, cells. I have more castles, but I think they are out of time, right? <laughs> Orly Castle, it is, oh, it's a lovely castle. It's a retreat for royal family. It was originally sitting on an 800 foot cliff over the river, but of course the river was dammed to make a reservoir, and so uh, now it's all surrounded by lake. Um, cost. This castle was never conquered. It's so strong, so it's so well defended, and cost. In Czech language means it's bone. And uh, so it's, it's a kind of bone cast. And one of the very famous generals uh, during Hussite Wars in the 1450s, he uh, tried to get this uh, conquer this castle and make a name for himself. His name was Jan Zyska. And he, uh, he didn't. So he turned his army around and sat on the ground. He said, we leave the dog to a book. You leave the bone to a dog. And that was the famous pro proclamation. So anyway, thank you very much. You have any questions? No, not really, no. Really? It was never bombed. So that's why it's all, all the buildings are, you know, 12,000 years. And so, uh, no, 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 it's original. Uh, and that, that's what makes it same thing with Krumov and Czeska Bolyov. Czeska Bolyov was never really bombed. Uh, Pilsen was bombed at one point at the end of the war. Pilsen is really interesting because that's where the, that was the demarcation line agreed to the Alta Conference. They said the Americans can go further than Pilsen. We have to wait for the Russians from the other side. And so they were sitting there for four days. Four days, just 50 miles away from Prague. They could have gone to Prague the same day and, and beyond, and we would be different shape, but that's the way it was. And so they were sitting there while, while the, the Russians still fighting Germans and fighting their way to Prague. No, I grew up in Czeska Budia, Budweis. Yeah, that's where I was born, and I went to university there. And but my father was transferred two or three times to, uh, because he was a forester to manage different forests. So I was never 
too far from Chuske Budovic, but lives in, in several, couple of different places. But I uh, claim Budweiser, Budo uh, Chuske Budovic in my hometown. Well, uh, of course, I know Chuske Budovic uh, ultimately. I'd say either Krumlov or Prague, Chuske Krumlov. If you go to Krumlov, you'll be totally amazed. The medieval streets and, and the Prague, of course, is, that's where I go with my friends. In Prague, that big stadium that built for the Olympics crumbled a little bit so far. What year was the Olympics? No, there was no. There was there was no. Prague, No, no, it's a different time. Well, this is Trahov. That's a, yeah, that's a huge, but uh, it was used for mass demonstration, mass uh, calisthenics, thousands and thousands of people. It's a huge uh, uh, field it's called Spartakiada. Um, um, and uh, but no, the, the Olympics was in the, were never held in Prague. Any anything else? Fourteen thirty-six. Everything, but you know, he first the uh, half of fifteenth uh, century. That 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 was the realm of uh, Charles the Fourth. Very famous, very very famous king, emperor really. Oh, it's only pedestrian oh, no. Well, when I grew up, there were still cars on the bridge, so probably shortly thereafter, I think for the last, definitely for the last 50 years, I'd say. How far outside of Prague were you growing up in the. And Cheske Budiewicz, a Budweiss, is exactly 100 miles south of Prague. <laughs> no, almost on the mile, to the mile. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. The Charles University was established in 1338, 1438, and that was the second a huge big university in Europe after after Sorbonne. Sorbonne was first. And uh, so that's why the Czech nobles went to Sorbonne. Students and they were so wild and crazy that they were called Bohemian. So, uh, <laughs> but Charles University, even today, one of the most famous universities. So, what next? Thank you very much.